Craigieburn is a town a little north of Melbourne with a very strange discovery of gold. This is one of the most bizarre gold discoveries that have occurred in Victoria, in my opinion. Someone at some point found gold here. It's listed as an alluvial placer deposit that's modern in age, which only adds to the mystery, because it means water deposited this gold with no clear explanation of where the gold was shed from or how it got there to begin with. The location of it is right alongside the volcanic vent of Mount Ridley. Whilst there is no definitive age of when it last erupted, some speculate that its last eruption took place within the past 1 million years. This makes the discovery of gold in this location even more strange, because it's listed as modern in age, which would suggest that gold has been eroding from somewhere close by post-eruption, and the term modern generally means it occurred within the past 12,000 years. But the area is full of basaltic lava, minus a few tiny areas where there is an outcrop of Silurian Age sedimentary rocks. The Silurian Age rocks found in Victoria can and have hosted substantial gold in quartz veins. The gold in the Warrandyte goldfields is hosted in Silurian Age rocks. And a little north of Craigieburn, gold was discovered in the quartz host rock and a line of gold rich quartz veins were mined. These quartz veins clearly got exposed by the erosion of the basalt associated with the flows of Deep Creek, so it's not too strange that gold was found in this particular area. But the gold discovery near Craigieburn? This is very strange. The lava flows of the newer volcanic province vary in depth, but in general they were laid down in thin veneers. Some are deep depending on how much lava erupted from the volcano. They tend to reach a maximum depth of 50 meters, but sometimes flows are shallow. The single gold discovery listed here is known as Fontaine Blue. I can't find anything about it beyond what this paper says. Not even old newspapers speak a word of this discovery. So we have four possibilities that may explain this find. Either it's complete BS, or the geological maps missed a section of exposed Silurian quartz that was gold rich, or the date of its age is wrong. I will list the fourth possibility soon. Since many maps list this occurrence, including Geovic, I don't believe it's a fabricated discovery. And whilst it's plausible that geological maps may have missed an exposed section of Silurian Age quartz, the modern creek flowing through the region is a little too far away from the occurrence to form a placer deposit in my opinion. One real possibility is that this isn't a modern placer deposit as the resource map details. If that is the case, that would suggest an ancient waterway flowed through here prior to Mount Ridley erupting. That is a plausible possibility, perhaps the most plausible. Now one thing that does little more than add to the confusion is the fact that this discovery occurs right near the main vent of the volcano in an elevated region. If this is a modern deposit, why is it in an elevated region? On Geovic, this discovery is listed as a lead, which suggests an old river or creek was the most likely candidate. So if the person who prospected here dug a shaft moderately deep, it's possible that they intercepted an old stream. If we look on magnetics, it's clear that the lava flow from Mount Ridley flowed south from the vent. The discovery of gold occurred in a region where the magnetics turns into this dark colour. This either suggests that the lava flows here aren't thick, or they have been modified by hydrothermal activity. Now I don't know who dug this up, or why they even chose to dig here. It's one of the strangest things I've come across. It seems highly unlikely that gold was present in the modern day streams for them to find, and for them to come to the conclusion that it was worth digging here. Considering the streams here are all recent iterations of the waterways that flowed through this land prior to the volcanic eruptions that covered this entire area in lava. And it seems unlikely that they worked their way up to this point and decided, hey let's dig here. But maybe the person or group who dug this up had supernatural powers or they were super lucky. Or maybe there's something I'm missing. These old prospectors knew their stuff, but this is a baffling occurrence. Like many gold finds in Victoria, the amount of gold won here isn't listed or known. It's just a single strange occurrence that puzzles the mind. Now I mentioned that there may be a fourth possibility with this gold find. If this is the reason for it, it would be an incredibly rare occurrence. This is very unlikely, but we can't rule it out. One thing worth mentioning about Mount Ridley is that it's a very strange volcano. It's the only place in the Victorian volcanic province where a type of lava known as Nephilonite was erupted. This bizarre and relatively rare lava was erupted due to a combination of low degree partial melting in an alkali rich mantle source, intraplate tectonic processes, and localized volcanic activity. These conditions created a rare volcanic event, 
distinct from the more common basaltic eruptions in the region. Nephilonite is very silica poor, which means it lacks the capacity to form quartz or silica rich minerals typically associated with gold deposits in magmatic systems. However, its low silica content is accompanied by a high concentration of alkali elements, sulfur and volatiles such as chlorine, which can effectively mobilize gold in the magma. As the nephilonite magma ascended from the mantle and interacted with the crust, these volatiles could have played a role in dissolving gold and transporting it within the melt. Could being the key word here. Near the volcanic vent, where pressures dropped and the magma cooled, conditions may favor the precipitation of gold either directly as tiny blebs within the volcanic rock, or through volatile rich fluids forming hydrothermal systems. Over time, gold could have accumulated near Mount Ridley's vent as the magma evolved and its volatiles escaped, leaving behind concentrated deposits in fractures or porous volcanic rocks, such as those observed at Fontainebleau. Unlike the rare occurrence of Nephilonite, what isn't rare is online fraud. This video is a paid partnership with Aura, in the past year, we've seen an alarming number of major data breaches that have exposed millions of personal records and raised serious concerns about online security. To give you a sense of scale, United Health reported a record-breaking incident with 100 million users' data stolen in the largest healthcare breach in US history. Ticketmaster also faced a massive breach, compromising over 560 million records. But the most unsettling incident came recently from National Public Data. This breach potentially affected every American, exposing 2.9 billion records used in background checks. This data included everything from names and addresses to social security numbers and members of the hacker group have already released some of it online for free. With these kinds of threats, it's clear that our personal information is more vulnerable than ever. Thankfully, I have Aura, today's sponsor, to help me stay protected. Aura is a powerful tool that monitors billions of data points, including the dark web and court records, to alert me if my personal data is at risk. Plus, Aura includes up to $5 million in identity theft insurance for peace of mind in case anything does go wrong. Aura's features don't stop there. They also offer real-time alerts for new data breaches, a VPN for secure browsing, a password manager for storing and creating strong passwords, and a data broker opt-out feature to prevent companies from stealing your personal info. I'm not leaving my information and my family's vulnerable to these kinds of data breaches. And if you don't want to either, you can head to Aura.com slash Ozgeology to try Aura free for 14 days. In that time, Aura can reveal if any of your personal data is already exposed. So take control of your online security with Aura today. And check the link in the description to get started. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. So we have two possibilities here. Either it was an ancient waterway that flowed in this area prior to the volcanic eruption at Mount Ridley, or the gold is eroding from Mount Ridley itself. The only way we'd know if this is the case is to get some of the rock from Mount Ridley, crush it up and inspect it for gold. Again, I find it incredibly strange that someone found gold here to begin with, and I'm unsure if they sunk a deep shaft or if they worked shallow ground. Those details aren't recorded. If they sunk a deep shaft, the river theory is far more plausible. In fact, in general, the river theory is far more plausible than the volcanic origin in this case. Nephilonite is very rarely associated with gold, but with that being said, it was found in association with gold in Hawaii. I found a study from 2003 that discussed the discovery of native gold blebs within nephilonite glass grains in submarine volcanic deposits near Kilauea's south flank, facilitated by high sulfur and chlorine concentrations in the alkalic nephilonite magma providing a potential analogue for other Nephilonite-associated gold occurrences, such as at Fontainebleau near Mount Ridley. So whilst this may be an unsatisfying end, we've narrowed it down to two possibilities to explain the gold occurrence here. If it is related to the volcanism, that would be an incredible discovery. If it's related to river action, well, then that would just be another case of lava flows burying gold-rich waterways in Victoria. Since we don't know the depth of the shaft, we can't say for sure which process it is. But in general, the most likely candidate is an ancient waterway that was intercepted. Before I conclude this video, a little while back I made a video on gold found in basalt in Western Victoria. The reason I mention this is because this type of thing, whilst rare, is a possibility. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Let me know what you think in the comments. Could it be volcanic, or is it yet another buried gold lead in Victoria? And as always, thanks for watching.